वेलकम आई एम श्योर यूर वेटिंग फॉर येट अन अदर हॉट वीडियो ऑफ आर्ट्स करेंटली वी आर इन द सेकेंड ईयर सब्जेक्ट्स फार्मकोलॉजी वी आर लुकिंग एट ऑटोकॉइड रिलेटेड ड्रग्स इन दैट नॉन स्टेरॉयडल एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटरी ड्रग्स एंटी पायरेटिक्स एनालिसिस ओके सो दिस इज अ टॉपिक नाउ लेट एस स्टार्ट विथ द बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ कॉक्स सी बेसिकली इन अवर बॉडी देर आर फोस्पोलिपिड्स करेक्ट in cell membrane and here and there now the phospholipids are converted to arachidonic acid now arachidonic acid in a normal physiological pathway with the help of cox1 enzyme gets converted into some prostaglandins which have physiological functions these are going to maintain homeostasis okay so you need to know that cox1 is a constitutive enzyme it is there in your body at all times it's constitutive okay cox is what cyclooxygenase now don't go and wonder what it is right cyclooxygenase so let me revise again from beginning there are phospholipids in your body those are being converted into arachidonic acid arachidonic acid with the help of cox1 enzyme which is a constitutive enzyme that is cyclooxygenase 1 is being converted into some prostaglandins that are going to maintain homeostatic functions where in all is this this is happening in the gastrointestinal tract that is in the git in the renal tract in and also in the blood vessels in the blood vessels as platelet function and macrophages okay now in the case of inflammation what happens is the cytokines which are released during inflammation are going to induce an enzyme called as cyclooxygenase 2 cox2 so cox2 is an induced enzyme correct as an induced enzyme it is going to release some prostaglandins so it is converting the arachidonic acid into some prostaglandins which are going to help in the inflammatory reaction okay so what is this chapter all about the ch this chapter is actually trying to stop this cox action so that the prostaglandins are not released and hence there will be no inflammation because it is an anti inflammatory drug and this is going to be non steroidal right you will study another chapter where you will study opioid analgesics however these are non steroidal analgesics so here you will have a destructor of this cox2 which could possibly destroy cox1 also so basically our intention is to stop the inflammation so it is anti inflammatory anti pyretic that is it will reduce the fever and it's an analgesic okay so it will give you pain relief okay now let us look at the next um, slide here the non steroidal anti inflammatory drug classification so here's the classification for you non selective cox inhibitors so non selective cyclooxygenase inhibitors will inhibit both will inhibit both cox1 and cox2 fine so now let us look at the uh, examples of non selective uh, cox inhibitors you have salicylates you have propionic acid derivatives phenomic acid derivatives acetic acid derivatives enolic acid derivatives now coming to the other main category you have the preferential cox2 inhibitors these prefer cox2 but it is not very selective now coming to the next one highly selective cox2 inhibitors these will inhibit mainly the cox2 only this is very good for us because cox2 are the ones that we want to inhibit right because it is the pathological one right these are very very good for us then and then you have uh, paracetamol uh, which comes under uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory but they have poor anti inflammatory they are mainly analgesic and anti pyretic fine we will come to this Let's move on to the third slide aspirin mechanism of action See aspirin is going to be the prototype drug for you in um a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug so basically you need to know this much at a very low dose aspirin works as an anti platelet drug okay so the dose being are in milligrams if it is in milligrams it's a very low dose aspirin it will work as an anti platelet drug If you give two to three gram per day in divided doses, like one gram, one gram, one gram, something like that, or point five gram, point five gram. Don't give 
the entire 2 to 3 grams at once. That's what they're saying. In divided doses, if you give 2 to 3 gram per day, then it will work as analgesic dose or antipyretic. So, it will work for pain and fever. Both it will reduce. If you want anti-inflammatory dose, then you will have to give 4 to 6 gram per day. This much if you understand, we can, this is the main gross thing. Okay. Then we will go to details of how it will work. Okay. So, let us revise what we have done in this video that will be a very good thing first we saw cox so basically phospholipids are converted into arachidonic acid arachidonic acid via cox1 will give you some prostaglandins which will maintain homeostasis this is physiological now coming to pathological cox2 is induced when there are cytokines some cytokines this will produce some prostaglandins which will help the inflammatory response fine okay the next thing we saw the main classification, you have the non-selective COX uh, inhibitors. Remember inhibitors, don't forget the word inhibitors. Non-selective COX inhibitors. These are going to be example aspirin. You can also remember ibu, ibu, ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Let's split it. Ibuprofen. So that you will remember the spelling. Ibuprofen. Then uh, you have the preferential COX-2 inhibitors. Diclofenac. Highly selective COX-2 inhibitors, you have etoricozib, paricozib, you are going to say XIB, XIB, how do you say? XIB, XIB is here, okay. Then you have the paracetamol which does not have any much anti-inflammatory effect, they are more, mainly going to reduce your pain and fever. Another thing you should know here is uh, indomethacin. This is very important. Indomethacin is acetic acid derivative. So, you can remember indomethacin also. Salicylates, you can remember aspirin. Propionic acid, you can remember pro ibuprofen. Okay. Then acetic acid derivative, indomethacin. Diclofenac is what? Preferential COX-2. What is uh, etoricosib? Etoricosib? Etoricosib is? Highly selective COX-2 inhibitor. Then you have paracetamol, which does not have anti-inflammatory effect. Uh, it has only analgesic and antipyretic effect. So, this is the video. Uh, sorry, one more thing we saw in this video was aspirin mechanism of action. We saw that in low dose, uh, it works as an antiplatelet drug that is in milligrams, right? Let me show you that. So, low dose, it will work as antiplatelet drug that is 50 milligram per day around. Antipyretic and an an analgesic effect. If you want, then you should go for 2 to 3 gram per day. If you want anti-inflammatory uh, effect, you should go for 4 to 6 gram per day. Great. So, we have so much more coming up. We have to convert the pharmacological actions of aspirin, then uh, adverse effects, then uses of aspirin, low-dose aspirin in detail. We're going to look at indomethacin, which is what? Acetic acid derivative, right? And it's a non-selective COX inhibitor. Then you have selective COX inhibitors. We will look at them in detail and we will also look at paracetamol poisoning. Please come back for the next video.